Hello everyone, welcome to this episode of Cambridge Zoocast. I'm Felipe Simões and today I'm joined by David and he's going to talk to us about his project here at the Cambridge uh, Department of Zoology. David? I'm David Willer and I'm a second year PhD student on the BBSRC doctoral training program. I'm based in the David Atmo building, which is a kind of conservation offshoot of zoology and linked in with nine other NGOs um, for applied ecological work. So David, tell us about uh, a little bit in more depth what you're doing in your project. So I'm developing micro-encapsulated diets to feed shellfish, that's oysters, mussels, clams. It's important uh, for a slightly different reason to what you might expect. So at the moment we need to feed an extra two and a half billion people uh, in about, well over the next 50 years or so. And aquaculture is going to be really important for that. It's the fastest growing food sector. But it's currently expanding in the wrong way. So salmon aquaculture is ballooning in size alongside other carnivorous fish. But to feed these fish, you have to catch fish from the sea and then give them to the farm fish. Biobs are really environmentally friendly, but the issue in production is that it's very inefficient at the moment and that there are problems with disease and feed quality. So the idea is that if we can design a micro-encapsulated diet with algae inside, we can feed it to oysters and mussels and clams and improve production that way mm -hmm. and at the same time improve the environmental sustainability of it. So David, what does your uh, daily research life involve? I would say there's not a specific daily routine because it is different every day. If I've got lots of oysters or mussels in the lab in tanks which I need to be feeding and carrying out experiments on, I'll be spending most of the time there. I might be going down to hatcheries around the UK to collect samples or um, run experiments there, or other days I might just be doing desk-based desk research, looking up relevant literature and trying to see how my research can apply in the research context as a whole. Okay. So yeah, you mentioned that uh, you need to go to some hatcheries and so how long do you have to spend uh, in other areas uh, around the UK? Uh, what does else does it involve while you're there? It's never a huge amount of time, so it's usually day trips to carry out certain experiments or collect certain species or items I need. When I first started, I spent a lot of time up in Hunstanton in Norfolk, rolling barrels of seawater along the beach to bring back to Cambridge. Well, then you, you go back and forth in those like, day yeah, trips. Yeah, it's and... back and forth between those locations, yeah. I did quite a few trips when I was an undergraduate here. I mean, my undergraduate was in plant science, so I spent a long time in Portugal doing research there. And that was, that was very interesting, actually. Yeah. Um, and then other parts of the UK, like Scotland. Okay. Yeah, talking about like international uh, connections, have you been able so far, like uh, you're still in your second year, but have you been able to make uh, big connections with other countries, uh, researchers in other uh, institutes? How has that been? That's been okay, actually. So in September last year, I went out to Krakow in Poland uh, for the International Mollusk Conference. Uh, I actually spoke there on what I was doing, and I won a conference prize, so that was a very exciting event and just a good chance to learn to tell other people what I'm doing. Yeah, and making your research uh, known abroad yeah. as well. So going back a, li a little bit in your uh, in your life, like uh, you were uh, a Cambridge student, right? An undergrad. Yeah. So how has that been the transition between uh, Cambridge undergrad and Cambridge PhD? Did you have anything in between? No, so I didn't have anything in between. I mean, when I first applied here, I just applied to do natural sciences, not really knowing what kind of science I was interested in. So I was initially specialising in physiology, actually, and nothing really to do with zoology or animals. In my third year, I then specialised in plant sciences and did a lot of statistical modelling of plant population and um, experiments on algae. Towards the end of my third year, um, I made several PhD applications. One of them was here. Um, to do a doctoral training program in biological science, which is what I got in the end. Um, and at that stage I was still working in plants, so it wasn't actually until six months into my PhD that during my second rotation project I moved to the zoology department and started a PhD in zoology. So I, I've shifted around departments a fair bit on my way here. That was during your first year? During the first year of my PhD, yeah. yeah. That's interesting. So. Uh, you're, you're part of that four-year uh, rotation scheme? Yeah, so it's a four-year scheme where you do a rotation project in one lab, then one in another lab, and you choose one of those projects to carry on for the four years. Okay, that's interesting. So David, just 
getting a bit away from the academic life, how has your life, in your general life, been here in Cambridge so far? It's been really good, actually. Um, I'm based at Fitzwilliam College, and that's been really good as just a kind of partial supportive environment. I've been very involved with the triathlon club and the running club here. Uh, so I do spend a lot of time doing various endurance events and marathons and yeah, ultra distance because races. Because Cambridge has this uh, aspect. Uh, I, I think I think there's an aspect of competitive people who are quite driven to do tough things, <laughs> um, sometimes crazy things. But that's fun as well, and it kind of gives a nice alternative to sitting in a lab or sitting at a desk doing yeah, that kind of work. Yeah, I suppose it, it lets you burn some steam as it well. Lets you burn some steam off and have a bit of fun. Yeah, great. Sounds like a good life, right? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> to enjoy it. Like looking forward now, what's your your goal now? What what are your aims for the coming year, coming two years? So for the coming year, I've I've got a lot of experiments to run. Uh, I'd really like to see if these just micro encapsulated diets can actually improve growth in a lot of the shellfish species. Also, as part of my PhD scheme, I have to do a six month internship. So I'm hoping to work with the IUCN, which is um, the International Union for the Conservation of Nature. And what I'm hoping to do is a policy project looking at what the different conservation NGOs based in the UK are doing in terms of how they're spending their time and money on different priorities in conservation and then seeing how that lines up with what local communities have outlined should be protected and should be focused on because there is a mismatch and we're trying to identify the key areas where there is a mismatch. Okay, that's interesting and that would be probably based in the UK as well, right? Yeah, that would be based in the David Atomer building. Okay. Uh, which is a big hub of conservation organizations just set up last year. Oh, lovely. Well, thank you very much, uh, David. And be back for the next two cast video.